Father, how are you? May peace be upon you. Today what I am going to talk and discuss about is problem-based learning. It is an excellent teaching method, teaching method. It is called as problem-based learning and much confusion exists in it. So we are going to address that. My videos in which I will be discussing this will be, will be four videos. So therefore, I have divided my discussion or explanation of PBL into four parts. In this video is the part one of the four part series and this I am going to give just the introduction and basics of the term what we understand to be PBL and not its detail. The questions that I feel which need to be answered when understanding PBL are what is origin of PBL, problem based learning, what is the relevance of PBL, what is the definition of PBL, what are the characteristics of PBL. These two questions, if we are not clear about that, then it causes much confusion what PBL is, especially when there are a lot of terminologies in which problem is used like problem solving, like uh, which I am going to discuss later on. Then what is Maastricht's seven jump model? What is the trigger material? What is the process of PBL? So therefore, these questions which are origin, relevance, definition, characteristics, that is going to constitute the part one of my explanations or my videos or my clips. Maastricht's second jump model and trigger material is going to be part two. And the process of PBL by how it is conducted is going to be part three and part four. Talking about origin of PBL, PBL is a problem based learning. It is a teaching method. It is a mode of information transfer by which learning outcomes can be taught to the students. In fact, students learn the learning outcomes. Its origin goes back to McMaster, late 19th century. They are the one who developed this thing and later it was adopted throughout the world. The design remains the same, but the design of PBL varies. And the most popular design by which a PBL is conducted is the Maastricht model. And that we are going to discuss in part two of the series. Its relevance is, it is one of the teaching methods that may be used and this teaching method has been recommended by world regulatory bodies. All world regulatory bodies, they recommend that this method of teaching should be used, this mode of information transfer should be used. But they leave it open to the universities how much they want to use. These includes World Federation of Medical Education, these include General Medical Council, which also includes other regulatory bodies of the countries. The question is, why world regulatory bodies, they like this method of teaching, which is problem-based learning. The purpose of this approach is generally twofold to use problem-based learning as a vehicle to develop a usable body of integration knowledge and to develop problem-solving skills in a student. Both are equally important. So problem-based learning is a vehicle. It means it's a method which the students use so that they can understand the fusion of knowledge in different subjects in the medicines, 
so that they can apply it on the patient to solve the problems and to solve the problems you need problem solving and they develop problem solving skills by doing it. In a problem based learning approach, students tackle patient problems, health delivery problems, medical science problems or research problems. So in problem based learning starts with a problem and students tackle the problem. Now that problem could be a patient problem, it could be a health delivery problem, a medical science problem or any other problem. These act as a stimulus for learning in the basic sciences or clinical medicine. The appropriate choice of clinical problems in the early years of the course can encourage the students to learn the relevant anatomy, physiology, biochemistry or other preclinical subjects. So in medical colleges, initially, they are preclinical years. But by using this method of teaching, which is problem-based learning, Clinical problems can be used to start the learning of the students. And when that is used, then they fuse the knowledge of basic subjects with the clinical subjects and develop clinical problem skills. Not only this thing, if you think of it, by students who are learning through problem-based learning, they learn a lot of things in addition to the knowledge. Obviously, the knowledge of the subjects do come to that. But more importantly also, they learn the problem solving skills that I was talking, skills of scientific reasoning, skills of critical thinking, communication skills, interpersonal skills, and they tend to become self-directed, lifelong learn learners by developing these skills. There are certain attitudes which are very important to have a good learning outcome when a patient comes to the hospital. The students also learn value of teamwork and they develop teamworking skills, they develop leadership also by practicing problem based learning. The principal idea behind problem based learning is that the starting point for the learning should be a problem, a query or a puzzle that the learner wishes to solve, wishes to understand more appropriately, think it and try to solve it what the problem is. So basic difference if you understand between traditional approach to teaching and problem based learning approach to teaching is a traditional approach it is assumed the students have to have the knowledge required to approach a problem before they can start on a problem but if, you, if a student wants to solve a problem with a patient or any problem the student must have the knowledge beforehand to solve the problem and this is the common thinking where in problem based learning, it's a paradigm shift. The knowledge arises from working on the problem. So when the students are working on a clinical problem, which is a scenario of PBL, let us say, then as they work on it, they acquire the knowledge of different subjects. Of anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, medicine, surgery, so on and so forth, depending upon what the problem is. Well, look at this list. Utterly confusing. There is a problem oriented learning, there is a problem assisted learning, there is a problem solved learning, there is a problem focused learning, problem initiated learning, problem centered learning, problem based learning, which I am talking about, task based learning, case based learning. So, what is the difference? There has to be a difference between them. That is why there are so many titles or there. In that there could be synonyms. Just to clarify, if any teaching method which has these characteristics which I am going to mention 
then that will be called as a progress learning. Small group of students, small group teaching, te teaching technique, usually seven to eight students, could be more than that, 12 or so, usually comprises of two sessions, problem-based learning cannot be completed in one session, minimum two sessions are required and usually there are two sessions presented with the problem or trigger material as I was talking before, the learning starts with the trigger material, the learning starts with the problem scenario. There is a structured approach to solving the problem and that structured approach constitutes the different models of PBL like Maastricht's method which I am going to discuss in later clips. The design varies greatly between students obviously. The design, the process of PBL. There is a consensus, there has to be two sessions. Usually, what are the steps? There is a consensus, what steps would be, but they might differ slightly between different designs. But the most popular design that I'm telling you is the Maastricht 7 gem model, which we are going to discuss later on as a clips. Important thing is problem, scenario, or trigger. I'm going to discuss things in detail later on, but just to introduce you what it looks like. A trigger material. It could be a paper-based clinical scenario, it could be a data, it could be a photograph, video clips, it could be a real or simulated patient. Most commonly used trigger material is a PBL scenario which is a paper-based clinical scenario which is used in medical sciences. Let me give you an example of paper-based clinical scenario. Now this is a trigger, which is a people's scenario. Let me read it to you. Dr. Noor walks in a small group teaching room to take a PBL session. She is confused as to how she will conduct the session since she had not been trained on this infrastructural methodology. Last night, googling on the process of the PBL session, she found that it's an innovative student-centered strategy that encourages learning through inquiry and exploration. She discovered there is a trigger in PBL and assigned roles of students to identify gaps in their knowledge, conduct research, and apply the learning to understand the problem and solve it. She was fascinated to learn that PBL methodology can inculcate in the students general skills and the role of a facilitator is unlike that of a traditional teacher. This is an example of a non-clinical trigger material and I have chosen this thing because it is related to medical education. Now there are two ways I can teach you. PBL. One is the traditional teacher based method which is this clips I am making and I am posting it. Other method could be the few students I give only this trigger to them, don't explain them anything about PBL and let them discover themselves what PBL is. Obviously, and I am going to leave them to discover what PBL is or whatever it is, then they are to be guided about the process. And once they know the process, which is a structure, this is sufficient for them to start knowing about PBL. I hope this helped you. We we'll take a break and then we will continue in part two of the series. See you soon. Have a good day.